Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter but not the spirit of a request. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel and for so many likes. The first story. Karen, do you think asbestos is a joke? See what you say after I sue. The second story. Coworker pulls a Ron Swanson and replaces her local PTA with her own organization. On to the first story. Refuse to pay $60 to fix my roof? Okay, I'll close your building site down and cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars. Characters in this story. My friend, who I will call Brian. Bullying demolition man we will call Keith. Greedy property developer we will call Karen. And the insurance assessor. There's more than one country than the USA. Some countries nearby or further afield in Europe are very backward in establishing legislation in regards to asbestos cleanup. This tale of this revenge happened a while back and is a work in progress. It's too good not to tell and I will try to keep you updated down the track. Brian's neighbor is a typical greedy career landlord that left their rental house in disrepair. The poor tenant was living in the cold house, raw sewerage leaking onto the lawn and holes in the house that you could see light coming out of the house. After multiple requests from Brian, Karen refused to get any repairs done. When the state government introduced new laws about ensuring landlords are insulating their rental properties, instead of doing this to the house, Karen kicked their tenant out and left the house vacant for five years. The old house deteriorated so much more during this time, with rats infesting the house and invading other houses nearby. Brian and his wife with their limited funds were able to get sufficient lending from the bank and offered to buy the house and do it up themselves to improve the neighborhood or rent it out as there's a massive shortage of rental properties in our local county. Greedy Karen did not want to sell, nor did she want to spend a cent on the house to remedy the rodent problem. She also did not care about the effect the house was having on aesthetics of the street. It's important to know that Karen and her wealthy family have over 100 rental properties, and due to lax tax laws in this region, they do not pay a cent and can get tax write-offs when their properties deteriorate, then claim on this as a loss. Long story short, some of them appear to be leeches on our society and are one of the reasons property prices are so high and rent prices are skyrocketing in our area. Her husband is also the chairman of the state's landlord association, an association that he often fronts the media for, defending landlords and putting a good media spin on them when there is a negative press. Fast forward five years and Brian finds out the house is going to be demolished to make way for some new houses to go in in the small section. That's good news at least, though Brian and his wife were anxious about how smoothly the demolition would go due to the fact the houses are quite close to each other. This is important for later. Prior to demolition, the company doing it had to get samples from all sides of the house to check for asbestos. Either Karen made it difficult for the company to get down the side bordering Brian's house, or they simply were too lazy but only samples from three sides, not four were taken. Demolition day came around and Brian was concerned that no safety barriers had been put up to protect his house from falling bricks of the chimney, nor was there anything from stopping dust and debris going all over his new deck and porch area. Later that day, Brian had the pleasure of meeting Keith. Keith is the demolition company manager that's well known around the district for only caring about money and has little regard for people or property. Keith was doing the demolition himself today simply with a digger. Brian returned home during his break at work to check the progress of the demolition and found the demolition was already complete after only an hour or so. The demolished house was in a pile. He climbed up on his roof and to his disbelief found hundreds of bricks had fallen onto his roof, causing damage, though he was lucky none had fallen through into the house. Brian phoned up demolition man Keith to ask about what went wrong. Keith initially played down the damage, despite there being 200 bricks laying on Brian's roof. Even with the damage done, no apology and the rude attitude of Keith, Brian kept his cool. Since I did a little bit of roofing when I was younger, I can fix up the roof if you just get me four new sheets of roofing iron and we will call it even. Don't worry about paying for paint, I can sort that out when I paint the whole roof after the fall. Brian's roof was not in the best of shape, but it was in much worse shape after having bricks dumped on it, leaving massive dents and chipping the paint. This is the moment that a simple decision on Keith's part would screw him and the landlord big time. Not happening pal, your roof is effed anyway. I'll get you a sheet of secondhand roofing iron from my yard to repair the damage on the roof, and I can come and hose off the dust off your deck and dog kennel. Cue the revenge. The revenge was not intentionally nuclear, but Brian had a dilemma that his roof was damaged and he needed it repaired. There was rain and snow forecast later in the week, and he shouldn't be out of pocket having to buy new materials to fix his own roof up to a good standard. Brian is normally calm and relaxed, 
but this situation and the way he and his property were treated sparked an anger that I've never seen before. Brian got in contact with his insurance company, and due to the issue involving a roof, a building assessor arrived that day to assess the claim. The assessor would then be able to seek damages from the landlord or demolition company if he found them to be at fault. Brian also reported the demolition company to the local health and safety authorities due to their lack of safety precautions used when doing the demolition. The assessor got on the roof with Brian and was mortified to hear how Keith had acted in such disregard with the damage done to the roof and his lack of an apology for any wrongdoing got the assessor mad. He then looked more concerned and bent down and picked up some gray fibrous material. Luckily, thanks to COVID, we already have masks on, Brian. This here looks like it's asbestos. I don't know how they got the sign off to get this house knocked down in this manner. You don't know at the time of being exposed to this stuff if you breathe in these fibers. It can cause serious diseases later on in life, including lung cancer. I'll get this sent off to the lab for testing and we'll be in touch. Fast forward another day and Brian was contacted by his insurance company. It turns out the side of the house that wasn't tested was clad in asbestos. Not just any bad asbestos, the worst possible type you can get. Insurance will be seeking damages to replace Brian's whole roof, not just the damage part. The cost of replacement is likely to be around $20,000 US dollars. This is the cheap part. The demolition site has been shut down by local authorities, and there needs to be a massive decontamination of the area. This involves having to remove at least half a meter of topsoil on surrounding properties. Test the soil and remove more if there's asbestos still found. Areas with decks need to potentially have these removed, so soil can be evacuated out underneath. The cost for this cleanup will likely be in the hundreds of thousands of dollars, but who will pay for this is unknown at this stage. Whether it's Keith or Karen's insurance or them personally, time will tell. In regards to Brian, his family and their dog potentially being exposed to the asbestos, that's another battle for them to fight, and I will keep you updated. Update 1. I've just been on the phone to Brian for half an hour. His workplace were very sympathetic and paid for him to have two days off trying to sort things out. This is in complete contrast to Karen and Keith, who are yet to apologize and have made life difficult for Brian and his family. Due to the neighboring property being closed off for entry, due to the health and safety investigation going on, it means Brian cannot even get scaffolding on his roof yet to fix the roof. Brian is worried now that the landlord is going to try to make his life hell. She's also a lawyer, apparently. Karen was the person that offered the old roofing iron, apparently not Keith. She spoke to her husband who said that because the bricks dented the roof, it means it must have been rusty and old, so doesn't need new iron put on. Keith did however go nuts at Brian for getting insurance involved and also the health and safety investigation unit who are currently doing the investigation. In regards to Brian and family still living in the house, according to the investigator the risk is negligible and the problems will arise when the debris are removed from the section. This will require a large tent etc. However the wind has been strong the last few days and I feel risk is still high living next door to uncovered broken asbestos cladding that's not being kept damp. Brian asked the investigation office person by phone about what to do about his dog and if they needed vet checkup etc. They were one meter away from the fence, which is about a foot from the asbestos, when it was broken up. They responded saying, do you think your dog will live more than 20 years? If not, I probably wouldn't worry. Brian's also thinking the landlord is probably scheming revenge of her own. Brian paid for a new fence himself a few years back to border Karen's rental, as when he moved in the old fence was half falling down. She refused to pay half despite this being law. He reckons because the fence is approximately 10 centimeters too high, she will ask him to cut the height down at his own cost, so it's in perfect position for her new houses that are to be built. Brian's plan is that he will pull the nice expensive fence down entirely and put 600 millimeter high chicken wire mesh up, as this is all that's required by law and there's nothing she can do about it legally, as he paid for and built the fence. Also, as I know the local newspaper editor, I've offered to go with Brian to discuss this story with them once the investigation is completed if Karen tries to make life difficult and also expose Keith for his dirty practices. Keith's company have just been awarded a multi-million dollar contract for demolition of an old car factory and this would raise some eyebrows. Update 2. I feel this story as many suggested will not conclude in a warm fuzzy feeling of ultimate revenge as things progress. Firstly, Brian informed me a fence has gone up around the exposed parts of neighboring property. This is only to stop people from public going over to debris pile and scavenging etc, then exposing themselves to the broken asbestos cladding. Brian also needed to take two full days off work when this happened to try to sort out all the situation and reduce stress on his wife, talking with all parties involved. So he was down two days wages coming up to Christmas, but his kind bosses paid him special leave for taking them off. The insurance company, after further clarification, will only be paying out for one quarter of roof and flashings. Brian will have to find funds to pay for the rest. 
This section of roof is however the most expensive, as it encompasses a large complex parapet gutter, roofing iron and flashings. Cost? About 8,000 US dollars, 120k ZAR. Update 3, 9th of January 2021. Wish this update was actually something to update you on, but alas it's merely to say due to the Christmas break, etc, nothing has progressed. Brian cannot get his roof fixed until the area beside his house is decontaminated, so the scaffolding can then go up. Update 4, 20th of March 2021. Another downer of an update. Brian is being paid $8,000 towards his roof. The landlord and contractor got away with not needing a huge area cleanup and convinced local authorities that the building site would be sufficient for decontamination, as the testers could not find samples over the fences of surrounding houses. All topsoil on old section was removed and replaced. A new house has been quickly built by landlord's builder. The house looks as cheap as they come. A kit set house and looks out of place. Sort of like a house you could load on a truck and move if needed in the future. Brian still hasn't had his roof fixed yet, as he needs to save money to afford to pay for the whole roof. Update 5. 13th of April 2021. Wow, wow, wow. Brian told me that the demolition company is suing his insurance company about the amount they have to pay for the roof. Justice prevailed, and he received a solid amount of money to repair the roof, which was more than enough to do the rest of the repairs to the house. I won't specify the amount, but believe me, it was worth it. I also drove past the section and Brian's house today and saw all the danger no entry tape around Karen's section. The second story is, My Coworker Destroyed the PTA I worked in a state senator's office with a very smart and capable mom. She was the senator's aide, but that was only for part of the year, and I'm fairly certain she didn't really have a career apart from that, but incredibly capable. This lady would always surprise me with the things she had done. Like once she casually mentioned the time she had gone to some conference in Australia to give a speech, and I was like, wait, what? My favorite thing she told me about was when she destroyed her local PTA. So in the States, we have these organizations called parent-teacher associations. It's a national organization with local chapters for different schools. They exist to foster relations between parents and teachers, but usually just turn into lots of Karens making unnecessary rules, getting upset over stupid things, and generally causing problems usually staffed by the type of people who like to create and solve problems to justify their existence. Sort of like an HOA for schools. Anyway, this lady was no Karen. She didn't create problems, she solved them. She hated the PTA at her children's school. It was always causing problems and had budget problems. When it finally began getting field trips and recess banned and wasting fundraising money and membership dues on administrative costs among other issues, she decided she had had enough. She joined the PTA, worked her way through its ranks, volunteered at all the events, ran for office and became president of the PTA. She then used the bylaws and her influence to disband the chapter. The kicker is then she created her own local club to replace the PTA, one that wasn't influenced by a national parent organization and bureaucracy. She was able to raise tons of money for awesome events, projects and trips for the students and ran the club way more effectively than the PTA had ever been. And everyone at the school lived happily ever after. Such a cool lady. I hope you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications.